Welcome to episode 10 of Canna Talk. On today's show, 10 reasons why cannabis is safer than alcohol. As I sit here about to narrate this article into a presentation for Canna Talk, it hits me as ultimately ironic that what I am about to present should never have been necessary if we lived in a country where our leaders who all swear an oath to a constitution that represents the supreme law of the land, took their oath in their office literally and seriously, instead of pretending to represent we the people while screwing us behind our backs in a fashion any prostitute would be jealous of. So let me start off once again by presenting one of my favorite memes by one of my favorite individuals. If people let government decide which foods they eat and medicines they take, their bodies will soon be in as sorry a state as are the souls of those who live under tyranny. Thomas Jefferson. What you are about to be presented with is a rather well choreographed comparison of two different substances that can have major effects on human physiology. One is seriously challenging to set physiology, both in physical and mental capacity and known to cause addiction, serious health hazards up to and including death, and psychological impacts that increase violent tendencies on a scale that is hard to match across the drug spectrum. The other is complementary to said physiology, both in physical and a mental capacity, and known to help alleviate addiction render serious and effective relief to many health wrecking maladies, both physical and mental, and show zero tendency to promote violence. Actually, just the opposite, making it one of the least harmful and in most cases, and factually, it is advantageous as a substance literally across the planet. Here is where, in my eyes, the crime against and the misrepresentation of Americans and indeed all of humanity rears its ugly head. One is totally legal, while possession of the other, even in small quantities, can still get you locked away in prison in many states for up to 10 years. The quandary is, as I'm sure most of you have already figured out, that the one you would expect to be illegal is not. And the one you would hope is legal, again, is not. Oh, and for any who would decry that I may be overstating, exaggerating, in any fashion, oops, your ignorance is showing. This particular presentation is not the pulpit for the legal component broached above. That has been covered and will continue to be covered in other Canatalk episodes. What we are here to discuss are the ramifications to your physical and mental capacity upon the consumption of either or both of these substances, or the 10 reasons why cannabis is safer than alcohol. Here we go. 10 reasons cannabis is safer than alcohol. 1. Many people die from alcohol use. Nobody dies from cannabis use. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, reports that more than 37,000 annual U.S. deaths, including more than 1,400 in Colorado, are attributed to alcohol use alone, i.e., this figure does not include accidental deaths. On the other hand, the CDC does not even have a category for deaths caused by the use of cannabis. Number two, people die from alcohol overdoses. There has never been a fatal cannabis overdose. The official publication of the Scientific Research Society, American Scientist, reported that alcohol is one of the most toxic drugs and using just 10 times what one would use to get the desired effect could lead to death. Cannabis is one of, if not the, least toxic drugs requiring thousands, let me repeat that, 
thousands of times the dose one would use to get the desired effect to lead to death. The thousands of times is actually theoretical since there has never been a case of an individual dying from a cannabis overdose. Meanwhile, according to the CDC, hundreds of alcohol overdose deaths occur in the United States each year. Number three, the health-related costs associated with alcohol use far exceed those for cannabis use. Health-related costs for alcohol consumers are eight times higher than those for cannabis consumers, according to an assessment recently published in the British Columbia Mental Health and Addictions Journal. More specifically, the annual cost of alcohol consumption is $165 per user, compared to just $20 per user for cannabis. This should not come as a surprise given the vast amount of research that shows alcohol poses far more and far more significant health problems than cannabis. 4. Alcohol use damages the brain. Cannabis use does not. Despite the myths we've heard throughout our lives about cannabis killing brain cells, it turns out that a growing number of studies seem to indicate that cannabis actually has neuroprotective properties. Let me repeat that. Neuroprotective properties. This means that it works to protect brain cells from harm. Research published in the journal Behavioral Brain Research and Experimental Brain Research demonstrated that even extremely low doses of THC, cannabis's psychoactive component, around 1,000 to 10,000 times less than that in a conventional cannabis cigarette, or to most of us, joint, can jumpstart biochemical processes which protect brain cells and preserve cognitive function, say researchers from Tel Aviv University. Another example is one recent study which found that teens who used cannabis as well as alcohol suffered significantly less damage to the white matter in their brains. Of course, what is beyond question is that alcohol damages brain cells. Scripps scientists discovered that 11 months of alcohol consumption that produced a blood alcohol level sufficient to be considered intoxicated decreased neurogenesis by more than 50%. Furthermore, the decrease in neurogenesis lasted for many weeks of abstinence. In contrast to the effects of alcohol, a series of publications during the past few years suggest that stimulating the brain's cannabis neurotransmitter system appears to have the exact opposite effects on neurogenesis in the hippocampus of both young and old laboratory animals and humans, i.e. neurogenesis is increased by stimulation of our brain's cannabis receptors. When we are elderly, our brain displays a dramatic decline in neurogenesis within the hippocampus. This decline may underlie age-associated memory impairments as well as depression. Research has determined that stimulating the brain's cannabis receptors restores neurogenesis. And why have I been chuckling? Because this indicates that later in life, cannabis might actually help your brain rather than harm it. Gee, go figure. The older you are, the more cannabis does for you. Number five, alcohol use is linked to cancer. Cannabis use is not. Alcohol use is associated with a wide variety of cancers, including cancers of the esophagus, stomach, colon, lungs, pancreas, liver, prost and, and the prostate. Cannabis use has not been conclusively associated with any form of cancer. Let me repeat that. 
cannabis use has not been conclusively associated with any form of cancer. In fact, one study recently contradicted the longtime government claim that cannabis use is associated with head and neck cancers. It found that cannabis use actually reduced the likelihood of head and neck cancers. If you are concerned about cannabis being associated with lung cancer, you may be interested in the results of the largest case-controlled study ever conducted to investigate the respiratory effects of cannabis smoking and cigarette smoking. Released in 2006, the study conducted by Dr. Donald Tarskins um, at the University of California at Los Angeles found that cannabis smoking was not associated with an increased risk of developing lung cancer. Surprisingly, the researchers found that people who smoked cannabis actually had lower incidences of cancer compared to non-users of the drug. <laughs> okay. THC that targets cannabinoid receptors CB1 and CB2 is similar in function to the endocannabinoids, which are cannabinoids that are naturally produced in the body and activate these receptors. Researchers suggest that THC or other designer agents that activate these receptors might be used in a targeted fashion to actually treat lung cancer. Okay, number six, excuse me, alcohol is more addictive than cannabis. I was in such a rush to get to this one. Um, I apologize for my misstep here. Let me read that again. Number six, alcohol is more addictive than cannabis. Addiction researchers have consistently reported that cannabis is far less addictive than alcohol based on a number of factors. In particular, alcohol use can result in significant and potentially fatal physical withdrawal, whereas cannabis has not been found to produce any symptoms of physical withdrawal. Those who use alcohol are also more likely to develop dependence and build tolerance. Also, when cannabis is more available, studies show that the use of hard drugs like heroin and cocaine actually decreases. Well, there goes your gateway drug um, argument, Mr. Government. So let's go on to number seven. Alcohol use increases the risk of injury to the consumer. Let me read that again. Alcohol use increases the risk of injury to the consumer. Cannabis use does not. Many people who have consumed alcohol or know others who have consumed alcohol would not be surprised to hear that it greatly increases the risk of serious injury. Research published this year in the journal Alcoholism, Clinical and Experimental Research, found that 36% of hospitalized assaults and 21% of all injuries are attributed to alcohol use by the injured person. Meanwhile, the American Journal of Emergency Medicine reported that lifetime use of cannabis is rarely associated with emergency room visits. Oh my God. According to the British Advisory Council, the misuse of drugs, this is because cannabis differs from alcohol in one major respect. It does not seem to increase risk-taking behavior. This means that cannabis rarely contributes to violence either to others or to oneself, whereas alcohol use is the major factor in deliberate self-harm, domestic accidents, and violence. Interesting enough, some research has even shown that cannabis use has been associated with a decreased risk in injury a decreased risk. Number eight, <clears throat> alcohol use contributes to aggressive and violent behavior. Cannabis use does not. Studies have repeatedly shown that alcohol, unlike cannabis, contributes to the likelihood of aggressive and violent behavior. An article published in the Journal of Addictive Behaviors 
reported that alcohol is clearly the drug with the most evidence to support a direct intoxication violence relationship, whereas cannabis reduces the likelihood of violence during intoxication. Hmm. But most of us already know that, don't we? Number nine. <clears throat> Alcohol use is a major factor in violent crimes. Cannabis use is not. The National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism estimates that 25 to 30 percent of violent crimes in the United States are linked to the use of alcohol. Wow. According to a report from the U.S. Department of Justice, this translates to about 5 million alcohol-related violent crimes per year. By contrast, the government does not even track violent acts specifically related to cannabis use, as the use of cannabis has not been associated with violence. Of course, we should note that cannabis prohibition by creating a widespread criminal market is associated with acts of violence. And number 10. Alcohol use contributes to the likelihood of domestic abuse and sexual assault. Cannabis use does not. Alcohol is a major contributing factor in the prevalence of domestic violence and sexual assault. This is not to say that alcohol causes these problems. Rather, its use makes it more likely that an individual prone to such behavior will act on it. For example, a study conducted by um, the Research Institute on Addictions found that among individuals who were chronic partner abusers, the use of alcohol was associated with significant increases in the daily likelihood of male-to-female physical aggression. But the use of cannabis was not. Specifically, the odds of abuse were eight times higher on days when men were drinking. The odds of severe use was 11 times higher. According to the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network, R-A-I-N-N, website highlights on alcohol as the most commonly used chemical in crimes of sexual abuse and provides information on an array of other drugs that have been linked to sexual violence. Given the fact that cannabis is so accessible and widely used, it is quite telling that the word cannabis does not appear anywhere on this page. And that ends the article. Now, with everything that we've put out here, um, it would have to be said that Mr. Torres has done a really good job at putting all of the pieces together for us. For all of those who would consider that alcohol is by far the lesser of two evils that those who consume alcohol have some moral high ground over those who consume cannabis for those who would consider that alcohol has um, any type of healing properties over the use of cannabis uh, i would tell you that this article puts most of what you believe to rest. Uh, I would also encourage anybody who is watching um, and listening to this on YouTube to please click on the link below and go to the website, tlbtv.com, where the actual article and the embedded video resides because you will find all of the active links and all of the resources that were used, including the links to the studies um, for the um, publication of this show. So with all of this in mind, I ask, please do your own research. This is but a start. Take it from here and take it as far as you can take it. Thank you for watching.